uh, PhD students uh, of uh, the uh, i3 lab uh, in uh, um, Politecnico uh, di Milano. And uh, today we are going to present you uh, what are conversational interfaces. Actually, uh, both of us uh, do uh, research about uh, conversational technologies uh, and uh, um, we are somehow uh, like in love with this kind of technology. And we hope like to transmit you during this lesson uh, the passion and uh, the power uh, of this kind of uh, of tools, so that uh, maybe uh, at the end of this uh, of th this lesson uh, uh, you will like uh, that technology, that kind of technology uh, as well. Um, please, like uh, when you have, like uh, be sure to have your uh, mic off, uh, otherwise, like uh, mute it. Uh, and uh, um, we would like uh, uh, to make uh, a sort of a special class uh, today. Uh, with this, I mean uh, that we would like uh, um, that this class uh, uh, will be uh, interactive, despite uh, we are uh, uh, far away from each other. Uh, I don't know whether you received the instructions uh, by, by the professor, uh, the idea is that you should uh, connect uh, to uh, the um, platform that's called uh, VUCLAP. You, you can see the um, link uh, uh, directly uh, on the slide. Otherwise, uh, as Michael uh, just showed you, you can just scan the, the QR code to connect to, to the website. You uh, will be asked to uh, you will be asked to uh, register to the platform. Just use uh, your email and uh, and a password. Uh, the platform is really really easy actually. Uh, don't worry. Uh, but when you when you have any kind of problem uh, with the platform, just uh, text us uh, in uh, in the chat. And uh, yes, even uh, um, again about uh, uh, any kind of questions uh, you uh, could have during the during the lesson, uh, you are are free to uh, interrupt us uh, by uh, uh, texting us in the chat. Uh, we uh, will manage to to answer you and to to reply uh, as good as we can. Uh, okay, just like uh, when you are all online on the VUCLAP uh, platform, just to uh, see whether you understood how to, uh, uh, just like to see whether you understand how does uh, VUCLAP work. Um, let's try with the first question. Uh, that's really a, a really silly question, a stupid question, but it's just uh, to let you uh, understand uh, uh, how does the uh, tool uh, uh, work. Okay, uh, now when you uh, are using your, uh, your um, uh, mobile phone uh, or your, your tablet or your uh, uh, PC, uh, and you are on uh, the VUCLAP platform, uh, uh, you're asked to describe your uh, quarantine in one word. Uh, that, mm, that question, of course, uh, does not have anything to do with the, class, the, with the class, but it's just to understand whether you uh, can uh, uh, interact with us or not. Yeah, exactly. So please feel free to answer. Uh, to the question, and then we will show you how actually uh, this platform uh, will allow us to interact all, to the, all together. So as you see, this is a word cloud. So basically, we are uh, showing you um, all the words that you are adding uh, in the WooClub app. And as you see, the large uh, is the word. It means that 
uh, many people has chosen the same word. So, for example, the word boring has been chosen by a lot of people. And so this is the uh, bigger word in the word cloud. So you keep um, going to see all the uh, word that uh, will be added by, by people. Okay, like uh, there are uh, 32 people connected uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, 30, okay. I have like we, that, that everybody connected to the platform uh, answer. Uh, that's good. I, I really like the, the answer uh, eating. <laughs> uh, very, uh, I, I totally agree, agree with, uh, with this answer. I, I feel you. <laughs> Uh, and uh, okay, now we can start with uh, with the with the the real class uh, because we we understood that uh, you were really able to uh, interact with us and to uh, uh, feel uh, connected with the with the platform. Uh, yes, as a professor is saying, uh, eating is the basic. <laughs> okay, maybe it's eating a lot. Um, Okay, uh, during this class, uh, we uh, this is the agenda, um, as you can see uh, in this slide. Uh, at first, uh, we are going to try to understand uh, what is a conversational agent and uh, um, how, do a how does a conversational agent uh, work. Uh, secondly, we are going to try to uh, understand why do we study this uh, uh, kind of technology in this course. Uh, and uh, we can reason all together about uh, uh, whether uh, a machine can think. Um, then uh, we are going to uh, explain a little bit, a very little bit of history uh, of um, conversational technologies. Uh, and uh, then we'll, there will be um, some space uh, uh, for explaining you uh, uh, about uh, uh, your project, uh, like uh, when you choose uh, uh, to uh, um, uh, use the conversational technology uh, for your uh, your project, uh, for your final project, uh, how should uh, it be? Like uh, what will we uh, we will expect from that project? Uh, and some suggestions uh, uh, to uh, create uh, uh, the the best conversational agent. Uh, don't worry. Uh, like uh, during the class, the, there will be some uh, some breaks uh, so that everybody can go to the bathroom uh, or uh, I don't know to to drink something. Uh, and okay, when uh, you are all ready, we can uh, we can start. Like uh, uh, the the first question, uh, uh, as I already anticipated, is uh, uh, what is a conversational agent? Uh, this is a very direct question, uh, but we would like to uh, start uh, uh, with this uh, because we would like to uh, uh, to understand uh, uh, what do you know about uh, about this topic and uh, uh, whether you already have a, a personal opinion uh, uh, or a personal knowledge uh, uh, about this topic. Then. Uh, uh, Whenever you want, uh, you can uh, uh, simply uh, use the, your uh, book lab uh, uh, application uh, to uh, answer us. Uh, I know that uh, this is a uh, like uh, harder question uh, with respect to the the one before. We will uh, leave you some time. Yes, please don't use. Uh, too many words, so maybe at maximum three words, so that we can visualize your answers uh, in the word cloud. Okay, we have a I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's honest. Okay, someone is saying that's uh, a smart object. Uh, we have a lot of people saying uh, Siri. Again, we have Alexa, the competitor. Okay, uh, an answering software, an assistant, uh, an AI trained for humans. Uh, 
uh, a software mimicking real people, uh, a robot, uh, uh, an interface that talks to people. Okay, um, they are all good answers, actually. Uh, a speaking assistant. Okay, uh, actually, you provided to us uh, all good, very good answers uh, because uh, um, we are all right. Uh, now, during the, the, the lesson, we are going to see uh, uh, some examples of, uh, of conversational agents. Uh, and you mentioned already a couple of them, Siri and Alexa. Uh, and uh, we are gonna uh, see like uh, all different kinds uh, of uh, conversational agents. Uh, but uh, uh, we prepared another word cloud for you uh, that's uh, uh, actually um, showing uh, a lot the all the terminology that's used uh, uh, by uh, researchers uh, and uh, experts in the in the field of conversational technology uh, to speak about conversational agents. Uh, uh, a conversational agent can be uh, referred to as a as a chatbot, as a dialogue system, as a chatterbot, as a virtual agent, uh, and uh, um, as uh, all the the words you can see uh, there on the screen. But uh, then. What is a conversational agent? Uh, as we said, uh, um, as you said, actually, uh, you were right. Uh, a conversational agent is a, a, a software program that's able to talk in ordinary natural language. Natural language means uh, uh, language used by uh, people in human-human uh, interaction. Uh, Mm, let's pay attention to to this kind of the uh, kind of definition uh, because uh, it's true that a conversational agent uh, is uh, a, a software program uh, but actually uh, what we care of uh, in this uh, in this um, situation is that actually uh, an agent a conversational agent uh, um, is characterized by uh, uh, an interface a conversational interface uh, and in the back end, actually, uh, there could be a really normal uh, software, uh, whatever software you want. The uh, only difference is that you can interact with this system uh, uh, by using uh, 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 your uh, natural language. Uh, it is uh, an interface uh, exactly as the, the keyboard, uh, as the touch screen, uh, but maybe it's uh, a smarter interface. Um, uh, we uh, used to call it uh, an intelligent user interface. Um, and, uh, and why is this uh, interface more uh, intelligent uh, and uh, more powerful than the others? Let's say that, uh, uh, first of all, it's direct and uh, you can uh, um, like uh, interact with the system in a more direct way, in a more natural way. Uh, it is even uh, more accessible uh, uh, than other interfaces. For example, uh, when uh, uh, you have problem using your uh, your hands, uh, uh, or when you are uh, simply busy using your hands for something else, uh, uh, you can uh, interact with the system by by using uh, uh, just uh, the speech. Um, and uh, uh, something uh, interesting uh, is that uh, a conversational interface uh, is even uh, more uh, efficient uh, than a normal interface. And later we are going to see uh, how. Now let's go through uh, a list, uh, let's say, of uh, uh, examples of uh, uh, conversational agents. Uh, 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 you mentioned some of them uh, before. Uh, these are uh, um, uh, all uh, uh, commercial examples. Uh, uh, they have all. Uh, uh, they are all uh, speakers, uh, or um, they are integrated in uh, your mobile phone as uh, uh, web applications, uh, or just like app application already presented, already uh, integrated in the. In the, in the mobile phone, uh, mobile phone uh, as default app. Uh, from uh, these uh, examples, uh, we can notice that conversational agents uh, can be um, 
Uh, what we would like to underline uh, uh, here with these examples is that uh, um, we can notice that conversational agents uh, can be integrated in many different devices uh, and uh, many different uh, technologies or smart objects. Uh, and that's something really, really important because uh, uh, you can create uh, a conversational uh, technology just once and then you integrate it uh, in uh, a speaker, uh, but then you can integrate it uh, even in a, a mobile application, and then you can integrate it even in a robot, because uh, when you uh, see here in the next slide, uh, okay, there are, there are some uh, famous conversational agents uh, that are actually robots. There is uh, Erika, that's a Japanese journalist robot uh, that actually, uh, uh, it's really, really famous uh, because uh, uh, as a, a personality, a very uh, funny personality, uh, and uh, uh, it is uh, characterized by a, a specific role and by a really, really specific features that combine uh, the uh, conversation uh, with other modalities uh, of interaction. Uh, on the right, you can see Jibo, that's a, a social robot by MIT. Actually, the original, that was a, a, um, a commercial product, uh, but then uh, like uh, 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 the, the product, uh, uh, the, the company uh, failed and uh, was shut down, uh, but uh, still uh, the MIT uh, Media Lab uh, is still working uh, on uh, on this robot uh, uh, to make some uh, some research uh, uh, about human computer interaction. Uh, another another example of conversational agent uh, uh, are uh, like Sara and uh, Merlin. Maybe you you already saw Merlin. It was used by um, by uh, Microsoft uh, to. Uh, uh, as an assistant for uh, for office, uh, they are all like uh, um, conversational agents, uh, but with an embodiment, uh, uh, and they they live uh, in uh, in the screen, like uh, in the screen of your tablets and of your uh, uh, laptop. Uh, for now, uh, we saw just the spoken uh, dialogue system, uh, spoken conversational agents, uh, but actually um, you, you have to know that uh, uh, a conversational agent can be even uh, uh, written. Uh, this means that actually we are simply speaking about chatbots. Uh, chatbots with uh, many different functionalities and goals. Here, for example, we uh, selected some Fun, the, the funniest one we we found on the web. Uh, this is a, a funny cat, Poncho. Uh, you can ask it uh, uh, about the weather. Uh, then there is the CNN daily news uh, chatbot, uh, uh, just to like uh, be informed about what's happening in, in the world. There is the beer bot. Uh, you can ask this bot uh, uh, where to get uh, uh, the closest, uh, uh, where, what's the closest place to get a beer. Uh, maybe it, that's not the, the time to go out, but uh, it will, will be useful when this quarantine will be, will be finished. And there, uh, there is this uh, flight bot uh, that's uh, a beta version by Skyscanner. And to know uh, about like uh, uh, special prices uh, for uh, your next trip, uh, and uh, a very a very interesting uh, uh, interesting um, conversational agents uh, we will really like to to present you is this uh, um, agent uh, uh, by Adrian Zumbrunnen. Uh, uh, he is uh, a designer uh, um, for Google. Uh, he works for a um, like uh, he deals with uh, conversational agents uh, and uh, um, conversational interfaces uh, uh, for uh, for the G company. Uh, and uh, um, the point is that. Uh, uh, he is showing his ability to uh, uh, deal with the conversational technologies, uh, uh, even uh, in his uh, uh, website. He actually has a normal website because uh, when you scroll his page, uh, you can find like uh, 
uh, a really single a normal single page website but uh, on the on the very top of the page uh, you can uh, uh, chat with uh, with the uh, with the website uh, and uh, understand uh, and uh, like uh, uh, know more about uh, uh, his personality and uh, his person uh, um, through this uh, this chatbot when you want me call you can like uh, show as a uh, like a little uh, demo of this uh, chatbot just to understand how does it work Okay, then thank you, Nicole. Uh, we have a question uh, like uh, Giacomo Annoni uh, asks us, why should a user uh, uh, use a chatbot uh, if he has access uh, to uh, Google search? Okay, there are uh, a lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, when you search something uh, uh, in uh, Google, in Google uh, search bar, uh, you search by using your uh, uh, like a uh, lot of keywords. Um, and that, that's not really natural, okay? It's short, it's quick, but it's not natural. Uh, it will be easier to explain a concept uh, and uh, it will be easier whether uh, the, your, like, the interface, the Google interface will uh, interpret this, uh, this input uh, and extract by itself the uh, buzzword and the keyword um, to search on. Uh, and then uh, uh, a second uh, a second reason uh, is explained actually in the in the next slide uh, because uh, it's a matter of uh, uh, efficiency. Um, as we said before, as I promised you before, uh, I would have explained uh, uh, why we say that uh, conversational uh, agents uh, are uh, efficient. Uh, now you can see it uh, in uh, in this slide. When uh, uh, you uh, speak with a friend of yours, uh, you usually uh, pronounce uh, 110 from 110 to uh, 150 words per minute. When you are a fast speaker, you can uh, pronounce uh, something like 600 words per minute. But when you uh, are just like typing, uh, the average per people uh, uh, write down uh, uh, 40 words per minute. Then like uh, as you can understand uh, uh, speaking, uh, in this case I'm speaking about uh, like spoken conversational uh, uh, technologies. Um, when you when you speak to to your agent, uh, uh, you are like uh, much faster than uh, as uh, than like uh, the same situation, but uh, in a uh, in a written uh, uh, with a written interface. And uh, um, last but uh, but not least, uh, um, uh, another ad advantage uh, of this kind of interfaces is that uh, actually they are uh, more accessible. Then this means that I don't know when you are, for example, driving in your car, and you can uh, you should not uh, use your hands uh, 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 to touch your uh, mobile phone uh, or to do something else. Uh, you should uh, uh, you could uh, use your uh, just your voice uh, to uh, activate your uh, assistant exactly as you do uh, with uh, uh, Google Home or with Alexa or Siri. Uh, and uh, you can you should you could ask them uh, uh, to search so something for you in this case in this case uh, it is a uh, um, exactly uh, the role of as uh, of uh, an assistant let's say uh, let's uh, uh, i will uh, uh, soon let uh, the like uh, let the the space the the stage to to me call the virtual stage, uh, but uh, first uh, I would like to, uh, mm, uh, let's say, uh, give you a couple of uh, uh, big numbers about conversational technologies. Uh, 
Um, first of all, uh, um, what's a really um, interesting number is that uh, one uh, person over five uh, has a conversational agent uh, in uh, uh, um, US. That's uh, all numbers uh, related uh, like uh, uh, about USA. And that's because actually they did this uh, this research. Uh, we uh, didn't find any um, current uh, uh, data, uh, currently updated data about the rest of the world. Uh, and uh, uh, you can, as you can see from uh, from these numbers, uh, there is a really strong connection uh, uh, between uh, uh, the success of social networks uh, such as uh, Instagram uh, and uh, Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, and uh, uh, conversational agents. Uh, uh, that's because, uh, um, as we say, the conversational agent uh, can be even a chatbot, uh, and uh, uh, everybody of us knows that uh, um, it's really, really bad to uh, download another uh, uh, mobile application. Uh, and it's, uh, we are really, really boring. Uh, uh, it's really, really boring to, to like uh, download another application, extra application, uh, just uh, uh, to have a, another feature. But uh, uh, when you can have the same service uh, already integrated in an already existing app, as for example uh, Telegram, uh, and you can have the same service as a uh, as a chatbot. It's uh, much more comfortable, and uh, everybody uh, in the world is going uh, like uh, is thinking uh, in this uh, in this direction. Um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this stage uh, as I anticipated uh, uh, to. To Nicole, who is Thank gonna... you, Fabio. Okay, thanks. So, um, I would like you to reason about how actually uh, this conversational agent work. So, I would like you uh, to reason with me, understand how they can uh, actually. Uh, understand what people is saying and try to provide a uh, corresponding answer to the user. So basically, uh, the structure is the one that you see in the slide. So the reason input that typically is the voice input of the user that start interacting with the agent, um, then uh, let's say that all the blocks that are in the rounded circle, uh, they are part of the conversational agent. So basically, the agent as a, let's say, a sensing model. So there is something that allows the user to actually sense and capture the voice uh, of the user. So and this is basically the microphone. And then there is another model that is called the act. That means that is uh, the model that uh, which task is basically to uh, play uh, some audio thread, so speak basically. So this is uh, what a speaker is doing uh, basically. And then there is a third block that is the more important one, that is the plan one. So um, how do you think that uh, the machine thinks? So uh, the main question is, um, can machine think? So uh, as a first step, we would like to ask you this question. So we uh, would like to understand from you um, and we would like to know your opinion about that. So please uh, feel free to answer to the question. And so, yeah, we can see the uh, real time your answer. So most of the people are uh, replying no. So. I think that for most, the majority of you right now, the machine cannot think. Uh, but there are a few people that think still that machine thinks. Um, let's see how these answers evolve. <laughs> so there is a person also that was super honest and say, OK, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, maybe we will uh, discover it together uh, in this lecture. Uh, so, 
Okay, half of you have already answered, and I would say that the majority of you think that uh, the machine cannot think at all. Okay, so I want to uh, ask you, so I want you to see a Google demo, and I want you to pay attention to what uh, has been done by Google. Uh, please let me know if you can uh, hear the audio or not. See how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Um, Day, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we leave here from like upper like five people. For few, four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh no, it's not too busy. You just you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Yeah. Bye bye. So, uh, oh, sorry. So basically what happens is that uh, the Google Assistant actually um, make a reservation and for a restaurant. Um, and basically it's just a task of as an, an assistant. So actually is called uh, the restaurant for you, um, even if, uh, the restaurant doesn't have an online reservation system. So basically the Google Assistant uh, as is doing the, the calls for you. Um, so now uh, I want to ask you, for you, in your opinion, would you say that this was a machine? So please uh, answer to the question as well. Okay, as you can see from, yeah, just the first um, answers, people are splitted. So let's say that uh, half of people think that uh, this was a machine, other people was thinking that it wasn't. Let's see if we can collect more answer for you. Um, so basically, this uh, was a really good uh, demo from Google. And yeah, we can say that actually it seems that this machine can think. Um, and so it's, I'm glad that you were splitted about this because it's, it means that actually uh, in this case, the Google Assistant uh, works pretty well. Um, then, so basically, let me remind you uh, what was the first uh, question. So, can machine think? So, we, uh, me and Fabio, just uh, try to ask this to uh, them. So, we try to ask directly to the assistant, uh, if they can think. So yeah, and this is just funny because uh, here we report the answer that the assistant provides us. Um, so basically, uh, for example, the assistant say, I think all the time, I was just thinking about how can I help you? And then we ask him uh, or hit, sorry, uh, prove it. Uh, and the Google Assistant finds some uh, some website that uh, actually uh, explain the, the sentence prove it. Uh, so yeah, it's funny because then when you try to clarify better your request, so you try to ask the assistant prove me that you can think. Uh, the assistant just say I do not understand. So yeah, this is. Uh, funny. 
Um, and here is the, so the first one is the Google Assistant and the second one in the uh, right side of the slide is Siri. Um, so uh, also in this case, when you ask directly to the assistant to prove that it could actually think, actually the assistant could not understand what you are trying to uh, ask him. So yeah, this is what just uh, a funny proof that actually even the assistant doesn't know if they are thinking or not. Um, so now uh, let's try to understand actually in which is the way that you can prove that a human being can think because right now we were just focusing on uh, what if the machine can think but Actually, how could you prove that the human being can think? So, um, yeah, this, this is just a, a question to let you uh, reasoning about that. So how can we prove that a machine or a human being can think? So which are our, uh, let's say, evaluation uh, parameter that allows us to prove that uh, the human can think? So please uh, answer to the questions so that uh, we can see all together your answers. Okay, a brain activity, imagination, okay, decision and planning. Uh, okay, abnormalities in routine. Yeah, this depends on the person actually. <laughs> um, then can doubt, yeah. Uh, emotions. Okay, this is a good point. I uh, will explain you later uh, what actually, uh, which is also the role of the emotion. Uh, could be creative. So every one of you provide us different answers and they are all super valid. So um, you are actually describing all the features that researchers are trying to develop inside conversational agents. So basically, uh, you are actually describing uh, what, which are the, let's say, the output of uh, what you think that um, provide an evidence of the fact that a human can think. So, but so as you see, uh, these are all characteristic and feature uh, that actually um, have been explored a lot in the conversational research. So this is funny because you actually uh, you got the point. So you actually uh, understand that the. Uh, the way that we uh, want the machine think is to be more like to the human. So actually uh, you are uh, describing and you are uh, just answering with all the future that we are trying to implement inside uh, the machine. But let's go move on and let's, um, I don't know if any one of you have seen the uh, movie imitation game uh, is a really good movie, so I suggest you uh, to watch it just in case you uh, didn't have or uh, you haven't yet. Um, so basically, in this game uh, is um, explaining the tales what uh, is an imitation game. So let me explain you what it is uh, in case someone of you doesn't know what actually means. So uh, there are basically three people, uh, there is uh, two person and uh, there is um, an interrog interrogator uh, and basically um, the idea is that uh, the interrogator should determine uh, if the other two people that they are uh, talking to is a machine or is a human. So basically the idea is that the interrogator is 
uh, chatting with uh, someone or something <laughs> and he should understand if is a human being or a machine. Uh, so uh, basically this is uh, one of the uh, strong questions that um, has been made by Turing. So the idea is that can machine think? And so uh, what he has done is to use this imitation game that at the beginning was uh, have been uh, actually designed for another purpose. So basically at the beginning there was two different gender and the interrogator should understand if it is a woman or a man. But then Turing, uh, let's say, adapt this kind of game for a machine. So you should understand if it's a machine or a, a man. So um, basically if you pass the Turing test, uh, yeah, it means that so ma many machine, uh, you can test many machine with the Turing test, so you can understand uh, if uh, and prove actually that machine can think or not. Uh, do testing it by by this. So um, let's see again another uh, proof of. I'm calling about an online request you once made about health insurance coverage. Okay. Work with all major companies and compare. Hey, are you a robot? <laughs> what? No, I am a real person. Maybe we have a bad connection. I'm sorry about that. Will you tell me you're not a robot? Just say I'm not a robot, please. I am a real person. I mean, I believe you, but will you just say I'm not a robot? It'll make me feel better to hear you say it. <laughs> there is a live person here. If you could say the words, I'm not a robot, it would really mean a lot to me. <laughs> I am a real person. Can you hear me okay? Right, but will you say I'm not a robot? <laughs> yes, <laughs> this is another uh, funny example uh, Yeah, for... What has been done, this was yeah, reported in the Time magazine, and uh, this is another uh, proof if, that allows you to understand uh, if the machine can think or not. But now I want to, you to do you, it by yourself. So please um, go to this link. Uh, oops. Um, let me share with you directly the link so every one of you can uh, make it. So please go to this link and try to do uh, the details, the test by yourself. So we are trying to do a Turing test and I would like you uh, to do it by yourself. So please, please do it. And then uh, I will ask you uh, in five minutes to, to ask to another question. So feel free to start. Um, okay, I will do the same. So you can do it by yourself. Okay, guys, like what you should do, like uh, I would like to add something. Uh, like uh, when you uh, go to that side uh, site and uh, uh, you can chat with uh, another agent, uh, you uh, don't know whether the other agent uh, is a man or, the, or a, a person or a, a machine. Uh, and you should like try to guess whether that person is a man or, or a machine. But you can even try to like uh, uh, cheat that other person uh, uh, and uh, let uh, uh, her understand that you are a computer. So that like uh, probably when you play uh, all the same game at the same time, you are probably chatting uh, each other with, it, with each other or maybe with someone else, uh, who knows. Uh, and uh, like uh, after you, like when you play, um, you can uh, even uh, use the uh, WooClub application uh, uh, and uh, you can tell us uh, uh, whether uh, um, you are guessing uh, correctly or not. 
Yeah, thank you, Fabio, for the clarification. So yeah, as soon as you finish with the test, you can answer to the who clap and yeah, just report if you correctly guess uh, if it was a machine or a person. And maybe some of you uh, is not able to uh, use like the the website because uh, uh, it's necessary to enable the flash uh, to do it. Uh, just go to the settings of uh, your browser and uh, enable it just uh, like for this five minutes, please. Okay, we start receiving the first uh, answer. So, uh, okay, we have people that correctly guess if if it was a human or actually a chatbot, and there is also a person that actually didn't guess correctly. So it means that, yeah, uh, you think that actually a human was a machine. That that is funny. Um, so most of you uh, correctly guessed it, and yeah, they realized that it was a chat bot. Let's see if other people um, guess it correctly or not. So for now, no one just doesn't understand that it was uh, it was a human when actually it was. So yeah, that actually it was a, a chatbot. So um, let's see. Let's wait a couple of more minutes so everyone can finish the, the test. However, you are actually doing great. So most of you just uh, correctly guess uh, that was a chatbot instead of a human. So yeah, congratulations. <laughs> so uh, if uh, other people would like to, yeah, just finish the test by uh, themselves could, could do that. Uh, we maybe probably should move on, but yeah, good job, guys. So you have actually experienced what a Turing test uh, means and how actually it works. But uh, let me clarify better uh, this, the meaning of this test. 
actually uh, the Turing test um, is a test that allows you to understand if machine can think or uh, it allows you to understand if actually the machine can correctly mimic uh, the human being. So it's funny because um, maybe there is uh, a misinterpretation of the Turing original idea and probably this test is more about uh, to understand if the machine can mimic uh, in a proper way the human being uh, instead of uh, provide as an evidence of the fact that machine can actually think. Um, okay, so now let's move to a uh, yeah, more boring <laughs> part of the lecture, but it's also important to understand what has been already done in the history and um, how uh, the conversational agent technology evolves over time. So in this slide you can see a timeline that starts from uh, the 50s and up to today's. Um, and as you can see, actually uh, the first person that distribute the, a paper about uh, if the machine can think or not was Turing in the 15 and then actually all the um, let's say intelli artificial intelligence field start to uh, develop uh, since then and then it, it just uh, is what we can experience every day uh, in our lives so um, as you can see, the first conversational agent that was Eliza, uh, that was, uh, let's say, a chatbot introduced by the MIT, uh, was very old because actually they developed it in the 60s. And actually it works uh, well, not so bad. So um, this was... Eliza, as you can see, uh, you can it works uh, actually as a chatbot, so you can just uh, type and you can interact with Eliza, um, and uh, and it's funny because, for example, Eliza asks to your user, please let me know what's been bothering you, and the user answer, the weather is awful. Um, so, and then Eliza maybe cannot understand it well, and so, yeah, he's trying to clarify better what the user, uh, what was the intention of the user and so on. But, so, let's analyze together how actually that works. So, basically, here um, is a transcription of a conversation uh, between Eliza and a user. Uh, so, um, in this way, you can see how uh, the user input are transformed, let's say, and are analyzed by ELISA and uh, that can provide you a proper answer. So, as you see, um, ELISA is just uh, trying to match uh, some uh, pattern, let's say. So, um, and try to uh, substitute, for example, um, the personal pronoun. So for in the case of, well, my boyfriend made me come here, and then uh, Eliza answer, your boyfriend made you, made you come here. So basically the idea is that it's just changing the pronoun uh, related to the, uh, and it's just repeating the word corresponding to the pronoun and it's just changing it. So this, uh, let's say, uh, give to the user the illusion that Eliza was actually understanding the part of the speech. Uh, but actually it was just a framework that allows you to match some pattern. So let me show you better this. So uh, if you see here, um, Eliza just uh, works uh, analyzing a set of pattern and associate the pattern, so for example, the pattern of the pronoun my, uh, me and so on, and transform it uh, in the proper way. So 
uh, for example, with you or your, as we see in the previous example. Um, so, and this is apply every time that um, Eliza can recognize a keyword. So whenever you can recognize this keyword, the pattern could be, uh, let's say, match with its transform. Uh, but whenever the keyword was not recognized, so uh, maybe this is just trying to uh, grab some action from the memory. So it's try just to recall some other action that uh, it's uh, stored in its memory and try to go on with the conversation. So this was just to uh, clarify uh, from that actually this kind of technology exists in the 60s. So uh, yeah, this is uh, important because then actually uh, just during the last years the, there was an increasing of uh, interested in in this kind of technology and there is there were more um, development of that but actually they are uh, pretty old let's say um, and now I would say that maybe we can make a break of maybe yeah 10 minutes or 15 minutes and then uh, we will explain you uh, in details uh, which could be your own conversational project actually how the conversational agent works and how you can implement your own so which are all the principles that you should follow in order to develop your conversational agent and uh, then we will show you actually how to do that. So let's do a break and see you um, 10 minutes, okay? See you. Uh, we uh, start uh, by speaking about uh, uh, some of uh, uh, the conversational projects uh, that has been that have been uh, uh, developed uh, in the IFRI lab. Uh, IFRI lab is the uh, laboratory uh, research laboratory of Professor Frank Garzotto, as you maybe already know. Um, this, uh, like uh, the, the name uh, IFRI Lab stays for uh, uh, Innovative Interactive Interfaces Laboratory. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the focus uh, uh, of the projects uh, in the laboratory uh, are uh, uh, like uh, um, uh, projects dealing with technology uh, that are for people uh, uh, with cognitive disability. Uh, and uh, uh, for learning then uh, and or for learning then this means like tools for uh, uh, children uh, uh, to learn new stuff uh, or to improve and enhance new skills and new kind of skills uh, such as for example uh, communicative skill communication skills uh, or uh, emotional expression skills emotional recognition skills um, but uh, like uh, I don't want to to spoil you uh, anything uh, anything more anything else. Uh, uh, I prefer to to show you uh, uh, a couple of videos uh, uh, of uh, that, like describing uh, uh, some of these uh, these projects. Uh, the the first tool uh, the first video is about uh, io sono io that means uh, uh, me is me. Um, and uh, this is a, a tool uh, that's able uh, uh, to uh, um, uh, let uh, uh, children uh, learn about their physical appearance. Uh, and uh, this means like uh, 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 body parts uh, and, uh, um, and descriptive adjective uh, like uh, 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 big, small, uh, and so on, and even uh, uh, colors. 
Uh, this project was developed uh, during the, the first semester uh, by a group of uh, uh, designers and engineers. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, I don't want to, to speak more. Like, uh, Michael, please uh, start to uh, play the video. Hi, I'm Buddy. Learning a new language is not easy process. Our goal is help children learn a new language in an interactive and funny way. Let me introduce you about EO Soon EO. Okay, let's begin. Suhyun, what is the gender of Hyeon Jung? Okay, this was the, the first video. Uh, actually, maybe uh, I should first uh, uh, tell you why we are showing uh, you the, these videos. Uh, of course, uh, uh, like uh, in, in this course, uh, uh, when you opt for uh, a project dealing with uh, conversational technology, uh, you uh, should uh, um, uh, from, like uh, design a concept uh, of a uh, uh, technology, a conversational technology, uh, design the, the project, uh, uh, of course, not implement, not to implement it. Uh, and during this video, you, you saw like some lines of code and some tools uh, for developing the uh, an, a conversational agent. Uh, don't worry, uh, like uh, that's not part uh, of, uh, that's not a mandatory part of, uh, of this course. Uh, actually, we are showing you these videos uh, just because uh, we would like you to understand what you can do uh, with a conversational agent. For example, uh, in, uh, in this first video, uh, what uh, um, your colleagues were able to do uh, was to um, associate, uh, like to, to understand, to extract some information from the speech. Uh, and then uh, to associate uh, to that kind of information uh, a visual feedback uh, for the user. Uh, when uh, uh, when you have some like any kind of questions uh, uh, about this kind of projects, uh, you like feel free to to text us uh, in uh, in chat. Um, and uh, like otherwise, uh, I'm gonna like I will ask Mikol to to start with the second video. Uh, and uh, yes, please, like uh, just take inspiration uh, from uh, from these videos, uh, from uh, from the concepts uh, of these videos, uh, and uh, extract like the best part, uh, uh, so that maybe you uh, you can create uh, for sure. You you will create something uh, something better and something uh, uh, more interesting. Che cos'è per te Boris? Un bel esperimento che è nato durante il corso di Advanced User Interface. Boris è un programma nato per creare una melodia partendo dall'ispirazione di un motivetto cantato al microfono. Boris è un progetto per rendere la musica accessibile anche a persone con disabilità. A chi è rivolta l'applicazione? Siamo focalizzati sulle persone con disabilità fisiche. 
nostro punto di forza è il comando vocale per interagire con il nostro personaggio. Permette a persone di disabilità di poterli usare senza difficoltà insieme anche a amici e parenti. Come è iniziata questa storia? È iniziato tutto durante il corso di Advanced User Interfaces e da lì abbiamo dato vita e ideato Boris. Quello che abbiamo fatto è semplicemente renderlo accessibile senza tecnicismi anche a persone che non conoscono musica. Non è importante in effetti essere intonati o altro, l'importante è dare degli input che possano essere trasformati da Boris. Come avete sviluppato il progetto? Con le mani. E con i piedi. <ride> Abbiamo pensato di sviluppare il progetto utilizzando eh, Dialogflow a gestire il flusso eh, dell'interazione all'interno dell'applicazione. Allora, il mio ruolo è quello di Giorgio è stato eh, quello di occuparci della parte informatica e musicale di Boris. Abbiamo lavorato con Giovanni, un ragazzo di Milano che è affetto da te tetraparesi spastica e quindi ha delle difficoltà nel muovere gli arti superiori e inferiori e in realtà anche delle difficoltà a scandire bene le parole. Il mio ruolo all'interno del progetto è stato quello di creare l'interfaccia e di creare un po' l'esperienza utente. In questo senso ho lavorato più a stretto contatto con Giovanni. Non mi aspettavo di vederlo così partecipe e ci ha dato un sacco di spunti su cui lavorare. Perché Boris è adatta a persone con disabilità? Perché è semplice interagirci. Perché l'abbiamo creato pensando a loro. Ma ci fate vedere come funziona? Va sì, benissimo. Certo. Pronto? Bene. Attendo l'ascensione della spea per iniziare a cantare. No! <ride> per farla suonare bene con gli accordi che hai scelto. Aspetta la trasformazione... Ok, ci sono. Possiamo ascoltarle insieme. Okay, this was like uh, another project. Uh, uh, in this case, there were two sound engineers uh, working on it and uh, uh, an interaction designer, like uh, a communication designer, sorry. Um, what uh, you can notice in this case uh, is that uh, um, a conversational agent, uh, uh, conversational agent is not just uh, a, a question answer system. Uh, what can uh, an intelligent uh, conversational agent uh, uh, do uh, is to analyze the input by, by the user. In this case, uh, for example, uh, the, the agent was able to uh, uh, understand uh, the mail the, the, that was uh, um, hidden in the, uh, in the voice, uh, uh, that was communicated with the voice of the, of the user. Uh, and uh, it was able to uh, like uh, uh, create a, a song uh, with uh, exploiting the, this melody. Now there is like uh, another uh, another tool. Mi chiamo Claudia. Che bello, da ora ti chiamerò Claudia.
voglio insegnarti qualcosa. Ok, in quale categoria vuoi insegnarmi? Matematica. A quale domanda devo rispondere? Quanto fa 5 per 4? Parliamo. Perfetto, ora chiedimi quello che mi hai insegnato. Quanto fa 5 per 4? Fa 20. Ok. In this case, uh, like uh, the previous video was uh, uh, about a project for people with, uh, uh, with disability. Uh, in this case, uh, this was uh, uh, a tool for, uh, for children, for primary school children. And uh, as you uh, notice in this case, uh, what was cool uh, about this project is that uh, uh, children were able to teach to the system uh, uh, about uh, new stuff uh, uh, and new uh, knowledge so that maybe uh, themselves uh, or other people uh, could interact with the um, with the agent in the future and uh, uh, ask about that kind of information uh, that was like uh, uh, the, uh, since that point uh, stored uh, in the in the knowledge of the, of the system let's go with uh, let's go ahead with the next video Okay, that was another example of projects. Again, like, uh, I guess, when you have any kind of questions about uh, about this project, uh, uh, feel free to, to ask us uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, what was particular in this project, uh, it was that, again, it was uh, uh, for uh, people, for children with uh, cognitive disability, in particular with autism. Uh, and uh, uh, the um, like the particular uh, the the main fun functionality of this uh, this tool was that uh, the caregiver the therapist uh, uh, of uh, of the child um, is able to uh, uh, personalize and customize the the chatbot uh, uh, for uh, like in order to uh, to satisfy the uh, special need uh, uh, of the of each. Uh, if pa each patient and uh, each uh, each person. Emoti is a platform designed for people with neurodevelopmental disorders in order to train and improve their communication skills in a playful way. Its main purpose is the training of skills related to emotion recognition and expressiveness. 
one of the main challenges that person with NDD has to face is to manage the emotional world, to recognize and verbalize emotions, their emotions and other people's emotions. Emoti is a conversational agent, and this means that the interaction occurs by speaking. The system processes the audio of the user and extracts the sequence of spoken words. It understands the meaning of those words and associates it to a context. It recognizes the intrinsic emotions of the content and also the emotions expressed by the tone of the voice. In one of the games proposed by the platform, Emoti asks the user to play with the tone of voice to express a certain emotion. Ottimo, partiamo. Ecco una frase e un'emozione per te. Hai disobbedito a tuo padre. At this point, the system uses an artificial intelligence to detect the emotion expressed in the speech by analyzing the harmonic features of the audio and provides a feedback to the user. The feedback consists of a brief moment of celebration in case the performance was good, or it's a word of encouragement and a tip to do better next time otherwise. Sei stata bravissima. Non è da tutti mettersi in gioco, ma tu l'hai fatto e hai più vinto. Emoti is a precious tool for people with NDD because it helps them to improve their communication ability and their social skills, and therefore leads to inclusion. Inclusion is one of the fundamental aspects for well-being for this type of persons. Okay, and this was like uh, the, the last project uh, we wanted to present you. Uh, that's uh, that's called Emoti, uh, and actually it's my it's my PhD uh, first uh, first project. Uh, its particularity is that uh, uh, it's a conversational agent, uh, and for this reason, uh, it's able to make uh, like uh, small chats uh, with uh, with the users. Uh, but it's also able uh, to recognize emotions uh, uh, by analyzing uh, the uh, tone of the voice of the user. That means that answers are uh, uh, provided to the users, uh, not just uh, with respect to what they say, but even uh, um, depending on uh, um, how do uh, they uh, say uh, stuff. Uh, and uh, this is like again uh, um, a proof, uh, another uh, demonstration uh, that uh, a conversational tool uh, it's actually just uh, a, an interface, a conversational inter interface that you can put uh, mm -hmm. uh, over another kind of uh, 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 over any kind of uh, uh, of technology. Uh, and uh, um, you can like uh, provide any kind of uh, uh, service uh, uh, to the user uh, with a conversational interface. Now let's uh, uh, talk about maybe the most interesting part for you. Um, in uh, in this course, uh, as you already know, uh, at the at the end you will be asked to uh, deliver a. a a project, a final project, uh, and uh, this final project uh, uh, must deal with uh, uh, some of the uh, presented technology uh, technologies uh, of uh, of the course. Uh, we have uh, a virtual reality, we have uh, uh, conversational agents, we have uh, uh, immersive spaces. Um, like, uh, of course, now we are gonna focus on uh, conversational technologies project. Um, what uh, is mm, what you should remember is that actually uh, for the project uh, we ask you just to design the concept of uh, uh, of the product and not uh, a real implementation of the product and uh, then you can uh, just like uh, uh, use a lot uh, your imagination uh, and yes you don't need to worry about uh, uh, the implementation part but of course uh, uh, you should care of the fact that uh, what you propose uh, it's uh, at least uh, feasible and it's not just like a fantasy um, 
since uh, since now on uh, we are gonna uh, provide you with some information that can be useful when you define your conversational project and let's start with the uh, the track uh, of this uh, of this project uh, me uh, the professor Gazzotto and Nicole thought uh, about uh, a special track uh, for the uh, the conversational uh, project uh, for this course uh, we would like you uh, to uh, design uh, a conversational tool that uh, can be written uh, or can be spoken uh, mm -hmm. that can be useful uh, and uh, usable uh, uh, during this uh, uh, strange uh, coronavirus situation uh, where everybody is uh, isolated at home. Uh, and uh, um, of course, the technology uh, must be conversational. And the target user, uh, we would like to, to challenge you to think about uh, uh, a technology for uh, um, uh, people with cognitive disability. Uh, you know, uh, this kind of people, uh, these people uh, um, usually already have uh, a particular uh, uh, and spe special needs, let's say. Uh, in this kind of situation uh, uh, that they cannot uh, uh, go to the daycare centers uh, uh, and they are uh, um, isolate, isolated at home uh, as everybody, uh, maybe a, a tool uh, to chat with uh, and uh, maybe to uh, entertain uh, and uh, to I don't know maybe improve some uh, some skills and learn new stuff could be a a, a, a little solution uh, for uh, for the uh, for their situation. Uh, of course, uh, like uh, uh, this is uh, uh, our track, uh, our proposal. Uh, when you uh, have uh, uh, other ideas uh, and other um, let's say other proposal. Uh, feel free to, to ask to the professor uh, uh, Garzotto uh, whether uh, you would like to, uh, whether you can uh, uh, submit another kind of, uh, of project. Uh, I read a question, so wait, all our projects must have a conversational agent? Uh, no, uh, maybe like uh, I explained myself uh, in a bad way. Uh, you can uh, choose uh, uh, among all kind of technologies, like, uh, uh, as I say, the immersive spaces, uh, uh, VR, augmented reality, uh, and conversational technologies. That means that uh, uh, if you choose, uh, uh, if you opt for a conversational technology, uh, because, I mean, uh, it's the best one, uh, then uh, um, we we will ask you to uh, go uh, through this track uh, because it's uh, really like uh, um, actual uh, for uh, uh, for it's like it's uh, like a really related. Uh, uh, it's really related to. Um, uh, to this uh, to this moment and okay we can uh, uh, go through and explain next uh, slide okay uh, here actually uh, we would like uh, uh, to let you uh, a couple of minutes uh, uh, just uh, to do a sort of brainstorming all together uh, you can uh, write down uh, some ideas you have uh, in a very, very short way. Uh, and uh, yes, maybe in this way we can discuss, uh, uh, we can comment uh, all, your, all your ideas uh, and uh, see whether they are uh, good or not, or whether they are acceptable or not, how you should uh, or could uh, implement them. And uh, sorry again for the misunderstanding.
Okay, let me, uh, let's say, comment real time your answers. So, for example, uh, it's really interesting the interpersonal communication. It makes sense because these people uh, have the need to improve their communication skills. Um, then it could be also useful for empathy is an important aspect of uh, children with this kind of uh, cognitive disability, so maybe they uh, would like to improve uh, their empathic uh, skills through a conversational agent, then I think that is not really good. Uh, <laughs> so basically, I don't see the point to uh, allow the children with disability to uh, just create a shop list uh, through a conversational agent. So maybe <laughs> this is not a good idea. Uh, then, yeah, it could be interesting for learning. And so, and I think that um, another important aspect that you underlined is the planning. So it's very important for uh, these people to have a plan of the day so they can know in advance what they are going to do during the day. So I think that also this is a very important aspect. So maybe uh, in the morning, I don't know, they can chat with their conversational agent and they can plan together what they are going to do during the day or something like that. Um, then uh, mimic human-like interaction. Um, Okay, so are you saying that maybe uh, what you are trying to do with a vocal interaction is just mimic the human uh, human interaction? Um, uh, I don't see, I don't know what exactly you mean with mimic, but it is interesting to maybe uh, develop some aspect of the human-human interaction also uh, in the, let's say, agent, so in the human-agent interaction. Uh, and of course, it's also important that this technology could support them. Uh, yeah, but you should maybe reason more about how can you do that? So which are the activities that you can do with the agent? In which way uh, you, are, you are thinking of supporting a children with, or a, a person with the, so that can be also an adult or so on. Uh, support people with, uh, yeah, cognitive disability. Um, I don't know if you, Fabio, has some additional comment. Um, no, I mean, uh, actually, I think that generally they are all good ideas. Uh, I totally agree with, uh, like, uh, with your comments. Uh, uh, as you uh, already know, in uh, during the design process, uh, it, it it's fundamental uh, to focus on uh, uh, the target user of your application, um, and uh, uh, for this reason, uh, you should start uh, uh, um, understanding uh, uh, the needs, uh, the special needs uh, of users uh, with uh, cognitive disability or with disability in general. Uh, and uh, then try to uh, find a solution uh, that can uh, fit uh, uh, that can fit with uh, their needs and can satisfy them. Yeah, let me just add another comment about that. So I just want to stress that whenever you choose your user target, that uh, basically we are suggesting you uh, to uh, choose the target with uh, of people with disabilities with cognitive disabilities. Uh, for and exploiting the conversational technology as a solution. But in general, you should have in mind what are their needs, because, for example, uh, there are people with cognitive disabilities, uh, you can refer to people, for example, with autism, but you can also refer to people with a, a cognitive delay. So these two uh, type of category as very different needs because, for example, people with a, a cognitive delay, they are super a, a super social person. So um, this kind of people, they are super uh, good in the relation with humans. Uh, so maybe you don't need to, um, let's say, provide them 
a tool for improve their empathy or uh, or something like that because or or to improve their relational skills because they are really good at it but maybe they are really bad into uh, some more uh, let's say education so some more uh, cognitive aspect in terms of their uh, IQ is very uh, low typically so maybe you want to provide them some tool to uh, improve their uh, learning of a specific uh, subject I don't know uh, maybe allows them to training some mathematical skills or some I don't know whatever some logical skills while for the target of, for example, people with autism, they are maybe they they could have a very high IQ, so they no, don't need to train that aspect. But on the other end, um, they have uh, a lot of problem and they are uh, lack of um, social skills. So in that case, you should be able to think about something that can support them in improving communication and relational skills. So please whatever uh, would be your choice keep in mind which is your user target and so they can have different very different needs that's it okay and now we can uh, like uh, go on with the class and uh, nicole you can uh, continue Okay, so basically um, now we would like to uh, let you know which are the basic principles uh, for uh, designing a conversational project, uh, uh, in particular a conversational agent. So basically the conversational agent can be categorized uh, in different way. So we would like to propose you a sort of a taxonomy that allows you to better understand which are the different uh, kind of conversational agents that you can uh, think about and you can design. So let's far start from the first uh, taxonomy that is uh, about the system that can be a spoken system or a not spoken one. So basically the conversational interaction can be uh, provided by both the speech interaction, so some speech-based conversational agent or some uh, typing base. So basically the uh, chatbot. So whenever you have just to type to interact with the, with the agent. So uh, this is if you are going to choose a conversational technology, this is one of your first choice. So you should decide if for your user target and your user need, you would prefer to have a spoken dialogue system or a non-one, so a text-based system. Um, then uh, another, um, let's say, distinction can be made um, related to who is going to start the conversation. So uh, basically the idea is that is the agent that starts the conversation saying, I don't know, hi, Nicole, uh, what are you planning to do today? Or do you think that it's better that it's a user that triggered the agent? So basically the user is, okay, um, uh, okay, agent, let's start our conversation. Let's speak about something. So uh, basically the idea is to understand, you should decide in your uh, design conversation system if you want to um, provide the user with a system initiative conversational agent or a user one. So also in this case, you should decide between these two different uh, choices. So these are all guidelines. So basically we are providing you the different aspect that you should uh, reason on. And uh, so the different category you should uh, decide to uh, let's say to, to provide to your conversational agent. Um, then another important distinction is between uh, the kind of conversational agent. So do you prefer uh, an agent uh, with which you can speak about 
just as some uh, task-oriented uh, topic. So, for example, um, I don't know, you could implement an agent uh, with which you can talk about, uh, I don't know, something about uh, the sport. So, uh, the conversational agent would be super expert in, I don't know, all the football aspect, but um, Oh, uh, okay, sorry, I was reading the Emanuele Fout, but let me just finish the concept and then I try to um, read what Emanuele uh, write, uh, wrote down. So um, we can decide to have a goal oriented conversational legend or a um, general conversational order, just like Alexa or Google Assistant, that they are just uh trying to allows you to have a general conversation so they are not just task oriented so uh for example a, a goal oriented conversational agent could be make a, a reservation in a restaurant so maybe the restaurant has its own chatbot that uh, you cannot ask that chatbot whatever you want but you are just asking them to reserve uh, a table for a day or something like that so let me just uh, read what Emanuele uh, wrote. So I'm going to say a very personal opinion that might not match with anybody else. I feel like in a critic moment of social distancing, lockdown and lack of basic human relationship, conversation technology the only mimic even at their best, real life interaction may not be what most people are looking for. Please understand that I'm not trying to undermine your work and I'm asking this to help the groups to make proper choice for the project. I would like to hear your opinion about this. So, um, Emanuele, I totally agree with you. The idea is not to mimic the real life interaction. It's just to support uh, people, uh, in this case, people with disability life. Because uh, if you can imagine a family that has some children or has some uh, parents with a disability, with cognitive disability, they are constantly in support with uh, some daily care uh, center or therapeutic center. So these people are constantly supported uh, by specialists and professionists that can help them in training uh, their skills. But in a moment like that, in which uh, they are, have not has not this possibility, maybe we can just support them and help them providing some technologies that can entertain them or can uh, allow them to improve their I don't know their skills or that can be just facilitate the uh, family uh, everyday life because if you think of a mom that has a children like that maybe uh, she has a lot to think about in this period and maybe having some support and some help could be very useful and in a moment where people cannot uh, get in touch maybe these technologies can really make the difference this is the point the point is not to mimic real life interaction at all. So I completely agree with you. Uh, this is not what people are looking for. People are looking for some support, some help for uh, just uh, facilitate their life and then uh, make it easy to go through the day. So this is the point. So I don't know if uh, if I explain you better. OK, great. Uh, so let me go on with the uh, with the yes, presentation. Yes, can, can you listen to me? Yep, we can. Uh, okay, like uh, um, I would like to to add something because, uh, uh, like, I totally agree with uh, with what Michael said. Uh, and uh, um, actually, the point is that uh, uh, when we uh, in uh, Ifri Lab, that's like uh, generally or. Uh, Main uh, main idea uh, is that when we create and develop uh, a, a tool for people with cognitive disability, uh, that's never thought uh, as a tool that uh, takes the place uh, uh, of a human being, uh, of a caregiver, of a, a um, parent, uh, of a therapist. That's not like uh, that. Must be uh, always uh, uh, thought as a tool, a technology that helps. Um, this kind of people that 
but that uh, can be uh, used uh, by uh, parents, by caregivers, uh, by therapists, by psychologists, uh, and to uh, stimulate uh, uh, these uh, these, pe uh, these people uh, and uh, like to uh, entertain them, uh, to uh, like uh, um, provide them with a, a different kind of uh, input, uh, so that maybe uh, that maybe can be uh, more effective uh, than uh, than others. Uh, but uh, like uh, we really really appreciated uh, uh, your comment uh, Emanuele because uh, we like uh, we totally agree with what you said uh, but uh, uh, the point is uh, uh, as Michael said uh, like uh, think about uh, 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 how do you feel now that uh, you are locked at home and uh, you cannot uh, go out uh, see your friends uh, and so on um now try to like uh, uh, put yourself in the shoes of a person with a cognitive disability uh, that uh, like uh, for these people usually uh, life uh, it's not uh, really easy in general uh, and uh, how can these kind of people uh, uh, this group of people uh, uh, live in this kind of uh, uh, of situation this kind of moment uh, and uh, like the idea is uh, okay let's try to, let's try to do something for them um, like uh, you said uh, to mimic uh, the the behavior or the um, the interaction uh, with a human being actually um, okay maybe uh, the conversation uh, uh, intrinsically uh, mimics uh, uh, a human the human behavior it's true uh, but uh, uh, you don't need to think about uh, uh, um, the like uh, think about the role of this technology. Uh, the role uh, it's not to mimic uh, uh, and to substitute uh, uh, the human being. It's just uh, to uh, support uh, uh, people like caregiver and uh, person with disability. Yeah, thank you, Fabio. You clarify, uh, yeah, in a perfect way, which is also actually the mission of the lab. So uh, thank you, Emanuele, for uh, your comment, because uh, your comment uh, allows everyone to understand better, maybe, which is the aim of all our projects that we are uh, developing and designing in also in our lab. So thank you so much. Um, OK, so. Let's move on. And um, I was talking about the taxonomy and the different aspects that you should take into account when uh, you are going to design a conversational legend. So let's go on. And for example, the other aspect that is important is understand if uh, the domain that you uh, choose for your conversational legend should be an open one or uh, a closed one. So in an open one, um, basically there are different topics that the conversation is um, dealing with so he can uh, provide you a reasonable response for uh, whatever the user uh, said to the agent. Um, but uh, actually this open domain conversational agent is pretty hard to implement. So uh, actually it doesn't exist something like that. So if you have uh, some experience with the, the um, personal assistant such as Alexa, Siri, uh, Cortana, Google Assistant or whatever, uh, if you try to ask something that is out of uh, the scope, let's say, of the assistant, they just say, reply you with, uh, oh, I do not understand, sorry, I'm trying to learn more. So uh, they cannot, uh, it's not practical to uh, reply to every question that the user asks to the assistant. So basically what uh, has been done, so what you can actually do with the conversational agent is having some closed domain uh, topic. So basically uh, the possible input that the user can, uh, yeah, the possible, let's say sentence and the possible question that the user can make to the agent are limited. Uh, so on the other way around also the uh, conversational agent are, um, answers are limited too. So this is because uh, they need some task uh, 
uh, specific and task in domain specific context to be able to answer you. Um, then uh, another important aspect um, is to understand if the conversation should be a long one or a short one. So basically um, the idea is to try to understand if uh, according to the need of your user and according to the goal of your conversational agent, if it's better to go um, to, to a long conversation or a short one. So basically we are going, when you decide to design your conversational agent, you should take into account all these aspects, also the length of the conversation. Um, another important aspect is to understand if you want your conversational agents to be embodied. What it means embodied? It means that maybe you want that your agent as a face or is a uh, animal like avatar or is actually a robot, so a physical robot or um, I don't know, uh, you can embody your agent in whatever uh, device you would prefer. As Fabio mentioned you before, actually you can implement and develop your own agent and you uh, could be able to uh, put your agent in every embodied uh, system so that from the robot to an avatar to until the speaker. So basically, as you can see from this picture, uh, the idea is that you can have something like that could move, so a robot, something that can sense and actuate in a proper way, something that is just uh, static, so like uh, the speaker or you can have, I don't know, an avatar on a screen. So it's up to you, but it's another choice that you are um, asked to make uh, whenever you decide to design your agent. So uh, then another important uh, aspect is to understand if you want to go through, well, these are more, let's say, technical aspects. So uh yeah you are not uh, asked to actually uh decide between these two uh let's say these these two different aspects but basically the idea is that you can choose if your agent would be a uh, rule base uh so basically um, you can decide how to answer to a specific uh, request of the user using some, some simple world-based uh, match. So, for example, if the user says that, so reply that. Uh, and so basically, uh, or you can use some uh, classifier, machine learning classifier that allows you just to match uh, the user request with a cert, uh, with a specific category and you can provide the user a specific answer. Um, on the other end, we have some generative models uh, that can uh, reply you with a non-defined response. But the problem is that uh, they are not uh, working so well because the, the main problem, I don't know if you ever tried one of them, but one of the main problem is that they are not, um, they are not very, let's say, logical. So they produce some inconsistent response and the, so they are out. So they are not uh, focusing on the a specific context, but they are uh, responding you in a uh, sometimes in a very random way. So they are not working pretty well right now, but I think that um, the technology can evolve uh, in the future years. So yeah, this is the basically the two um, aspects that we have already seen with the pros and the cons. Um, so let me uh, explain you the last uh, important feature of a, a conversational agent. So the idea is also to understand if you want your system to have a memory. Uh, so or so basically you want the system to know uh, something about uh, the user. Uh, 
I don't know, the user history interaction. So if the user, I don't know, two days ago told you something about his life, you should, the agent should be able to recall that episode that the user uh, told to the agent whenever you want. Um, so basically the idea is to also think about if your agent uh, could record some episode or can store some history of the user interaction. So these are all the features that you can find on the slide. So maybe if you choose, uh, if you will choose the conversational agent uh, project, uh, maybe this could be a good guidelines to allow you to um, design and make a decision about uh, the conversational agent. And now I leave the floor to uh, Fabio that will explain you better other aspects. So how to actually design the conversation. Yes, thank you, Nicole. Um, yes, let's uh, let's try to understand how to, to design the conversation. Uh, uh, let's start by saying uh, what is uh, the conversation design? Conversation design is a, a, a design language uh, based on, uh, on human conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's similar to how material design is a uh, is design language based on uh, uh, pen and paper. Um, and is a, a, a multidisciplinary field, including uh, voice user interface design, interaction design, visual design, motion design, um, audio design and uh, UX writing as well. Um, if you already have um, uh, works with uh, a graphical user interface, uh, it, it can be tempting to simply add a voice to um, and text to speech uh, to uh, turn out it uh, in a, a, a conversational uh, agent, a conversational design. Uh, but uh, actually that's uh, a really common mistake uh, and that's because uh, actually um, conversational uh, agents uh, are intrinsically multimodal because uh, a lot of times uh, happen, happens that uh, uh, actually uh, conversational agents uh, are robot and uh, uh, this means that they are intrinsically tangible uh, then uh, they permit even uh, tangible interaction uh, or they are uh, um, web application uh, with a screen and they usually show something, uh, uh, some relevant information uh, on the screen uh, and this means that they exploit even the, the visual channel. Then uh, let's say that the conversational agents uh, uh, are intrinsically multimodal uh, and for this reason uh, they uh, need uh, a special kind, uh, a special process uh, uh, of design. Uh, it's not enough uh, just to add like the uh, um, speech understanding uh, and the speech generation uh, feature to uh, a normal uh, interface. Um, like uh, in, uh, in the previous slide, uh, I attached you uh, the link of uh, uh, the, uh, to the Google material uh, for uh, uh, designing a conversation. Uh, when you uh, decide to um, uh, to uh, design a, a conversational project for this course, uh, I really um, recommend you to uh, give a give a look to to that because uh, it's really really useful to um, have a, 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 a clear idea of uh, what to do and uh, uh, at uh, which point uh, it's necessary to do uh, every every stuff. And now, like uh, in uh, in the following with the following slides, uh, I'm gonna try to uh, sum up uh, all uh, uh, what you what you need to do uh, and what you need to to know. Uh, let's say uh, let's start by by saying that. Uh, um, it will be really, really interesting for you to uh, apply for the uh, conversational project. Uh, and that's because uh, uh, there is this sort of new um, figure, professional figure that's called uh, the conversational designer. Uh, that's uh, uh, actually uh, really requested uh, uh, on the market. Uh, who is uh, a conversational designer? Uh, 
mm, she or he uh, is a, a person uh, who curates the conversation, uh, defining the flow and its uh, under, underlying logic uh, in a detailed uh, design specification uh, that represents the uh, complete user experience. Um, le let's uh, let's see uh, like uh, what are the the principles uh, underlying the, uh, the, uh, the conversational design. Uh, here you can find uh, uh, like the 10 uh, main rules uh, and uh, probably all of you already saw them uh, related to uh, graphical user interface design, uh, of course, because they are uh, the Nielsen rules. Um, the, the point is that uh, uh, some uh, conversational designers uh, try uh, to adapt them uh, uh, to um, voice-based uh, interfaces. Mm -hmm. uh, what does it mean? It means that, for example, uh, let's see point one, visibility, uh, show system status. Uh, uh, what does it mean? It means that, uh, for example, uh, every every user, uh, every every system, every conversational si system uh, should uh, um, try to let uh, to should let uh, the system the, the user understand uh, um, whether the system uh, is listening or not. For example, uh, uh, imagine uh, your uh, uh, Siri application uh, or your Alexa or your Google Home uh, or I don't know uh, whether you have ever tried some uh, other ones. Uh, when uh, you start uh, um, talking to the user, uh, it is usually to the to the system. Uh, it is usually doing uh, uh, something, uh, showing something, uh, making a sound, uh, just to let the user understand uh, that uh, it is listening and that it uh, stop uh, stops uh, listening in order to uh, elaborate and process the uh, audio, the input audio. Um, the, the conversational, like uh, uh, the second point is freedom, uh, and that's uh, uh, somehow uh, easy for, for conversational interfaces because uh, uh, conversational interfaces uh, are uh, uh, really natural and there is no uh, restriction in the uh, uh, input uh, that uh, the system, the, the user could, uh, um, could insert to, to the system. Uh, like uh, I will, like I could go through all these uh, ten points list, but actually it's not my my purpose here. Uh, on the other side, on the on the opposite, uh, I would like you to um, uh, tell us, uh, according to you, like uh, uh, creating a conversational uh, technology. What are the main challenges uh, that a conversational designer uh, would face and uh, could face? Uh, they can uh, be related to uh, like uh, the the context, the scenario, the technology. Like, uh, don't limit yourself uh, and uh, like uh, tell us uh, whatever you you think it's meaningful in this context. Yeah, Fabio, I would suggest, sorry for interrupting you, but maybe we should uh, do a break. Uh, we will uh, open the question so people during the break can feel free to answer to the question and then I would suggest to make some 10 minutes break. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. See you in 10 minutes. Okay, in this situation, uh, in uh, uh, in this kind of uh, uh, of situation, uh, is it uh, uh, correct to um, to use uh, a, a conversational uh, um, a conversational interface? Uh, 
And that's the first point. If the answer is yes, then we can go through with this uh, with this process. Uh, the first step is to identify who are your target users. Uh, maybe you can uh, even identify uh, some groups, uh, different groups of target users, uh, maybe one, two or three groups. Um, and uh, it's really, really useful to understand what are the needs of uh, your target users, uh, what, does, what are the uh, um, context uh, where the, uh, your users uh, uh, would operate uh, uh, with uh, your, uh, your solution. Um, and uh, what are the uh, goals uh, of your users? Um, uh, like uh, I would like to to connect uh, to what uh, was said uh, in the in the chat. Um, when you opt for uh, um, people with cognitive disability uh, as a, a target user for your for your project, uh, you should first uh, uh, try to understand which kind of uh, needs uh, uh, do they have uh, and how you could satisfy these kind of needs. Um, now, like uh, at the point that uh, you uh, understood the context uh, of your user uh, and uh, um, the goals uh, uh, of your user, uh, you should define a, a sort of user journey. A user journey is uh, a pathway for the user to complete uh, a goal in a given context. Um, the and uh, to um, like uh, understand uh, in a proper way this uh, user journey you should describe each of the relevant relevant uh, moments and steps in the in the journey um, what uh, uh, you are asked to do then is to identify the uh, key use cases uh, of uh, of the, the user uh, and uh, to um, the, the next step is to create a persona uh, for your agent. Uh, what, is, uh, what is a persona? Uh, you uh, probably know uh, more than me um, as a as designer. The, the, systems, the system persona is, uh, mm, let's say in this case, in a conversational system, uh, is a, a conversational partner created to uh, be the front end of the technology uh, that uh, can interact directly uh, with the user. Defining a clear system persona is vital and ensuring a, a consistent user interface. And uh, in, like uh, you can understand it uh, uh, very easily because, for example, when you create a, a persona that's really rude uh, to the user, uh, of course, uh, you're uh, probably most of your users uh, won't like that kind of uh, interface and won't uh, use your system anymore. Um, uh, why should you use a persona? Persona is a, a design tool that helps you write the conversation. Uh, before you can write a dialogue, uh, you have to write a clear picture of who is communicating. Because a, a good persona uh, evokes a distinct tone of and personality, and it's simple enough to um, like uh, keep in mind uh, uh, who is speaking and who is writing. Um, here you can find some steps to follow to help you uh, um, to uh, create uh, a, a persona. Then, like uh, when uh, I really suggest you, uh, when you uh, in the future or for this project uh, want to create a conversational tool, a conversational interface to follow, just like uh, even in a very quick way, but to follow all these steps. Uh, and uh, in the in the follow slide, following slide, uh, you can uh, even uh, face another uh, decision. Uh, the decision is to um, choose between a, a synthesized or a recorded uh, voice. Okay, of course, in this case, uh, I'm speaking about uh, spoken conversational agents. When uh, you are dealing with a, a written conversational agent, uh, a chatbot, uh, that's not necessary. Uh, but uh, it was just for you to know that uh, uh, voice is part of uh, uh, the personality, uh, like 
it's not part of the uh, personality, but uh, uh, contributes to create uh, uh, the image of the personality uh, of the of the agent. Then, like uh, depending on uh, which kind of uh, voice uh, you uh, opt for uh, for your agent, uh, the user will have a, a, a different uh, perception uh, uh, of uh, of the agent. Uh, later on, uh, what we would like uh, you to do, what you should do, uh, is to ask yourself, okay, do I need the conversational design principles? Uh, if uh, no, then like uh, the best stuff to do is to go and learn uh, about them. Uh, but actually, uh, that's uh, um, uh, the main design principle. Uh, you can find them all in these slides then uh, you don't uh, need to search for them uh, uh, anywhere in the internet. Uh, uh, you're lucky you can just uh, uh, go through all, uh, all the slides and uh, all the last part, especially the last part of this uh, of these slides. Uh, and uh, actually what you should do at this point uh, uh, when uh, you already, uh, um, let's say, um, know about uh, all the design, uh, uh, conversation design principle, uh, you should uh, write down some sample dialogues uh, and uh, uh, high level flows. Uh, what do I mean with this? Um, the point is that now that we have a clear picture of who is communicating, uh, that's uh, your persona and your users, and that we are and what we are communicating about, uh, that is the, uh, the goal, the use cases, um, it's time to, to write down uh, the, the dialogue. My suggestion uh, is to uh, um, try to um, simulate some dialogues uh, with a friend of yours, with a colleague of yours. Um, maybe one, uh, like you can uh, alternate each other. At some point, uh, you can be the, uh, the agent uh, and at some other point, you can be the, the user. Uh, and try to uh, write down some uh, some like uh, examples uh, of uh, uh, sample dialogues. In this way, uh, exactly as uh, script writers uh, in uh, in theaters uh, or in uh, uh, movies uh, uh, production, uh, you will be able to have uh, a, a discrete amount of uh, uh, conversations. Uh, that uh, actually um, permit to satisfy the goals uh, uh, of the user and all the uh, use cases. Uh, uh, at this point, what you should do is to create a sort of uh, a flow chart, uh, like uh, uh, describing uh, uh, all these uh, uh, all the the conversations uh, you you produced uh, with your colleagues. Uh, and uh, um, what uh, uh, I mean, you should you could think, okay, now we can just implement the agent, give all this work to the uh, engineer, and uh, our work is all done. Actually, it's not like this because creating a conversational agent uh, is a sort of uh, iterative process. Uh, the, the first step uh, now is to uh, test the uh, application with the user. Uh, and in this way, we can understand whether the user uh, is uh, uh, fine with uh, uh, the uh, experience we created with uh, for him or, or for her, uh, and uh, whether the uh, the user uh, um, exploits uh, the uh, dialogue flows we created for uh, her or for him. Uh, we can uh, see in the next slide, uh, actually, that's a really common uh, picture. Uh, maybe um, it can happen that uh, you design something, uh, but the uh, user uh, uses, uh, uses some uh, shortcuts uh, uh, or uh, um, very simply uh, different strategies uh, to uh, reach uh, the, the goal. So that uh, at that point, uh, you will be asked to adapt your system uh, to all these new uh, conversational paths to um, create a, a powerful and uh, an effective conversation. Um, with uh, all this strategy, with this strategy, uh, what we did uh, is to uh, create uh, a, a conversational agent uh, uh, that works for uh, um, 
uh, most of the cases, let's say the, the majority of the cases, uh, but not for uh, every case in the world. Uh, here in this slide, uh, you can uh, uh, see uh, uh, that maybe probably you designed uh, for the uh, most of the users and the most important cases, uh, that's the head of the animal. Uh, but uh, uh, maybe when uh, you were good as a design as, as designers, uh, you uh, even designed uh, um, dialogues and features for uh, uh, the body of the, of the animal. Uh, but uh, at some point, uh, you will be asked to even uh, design for detail. Detail, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, detail represents all the um, kind of features uh, and dialogues uh, that are less important uh, and that uh, fewer users uh, uh, use. Uh, but uh, that actually contribute to create a really uh, stable uh, and robust uh, and uh, powerful uh, uh, interface. Um, like uh, still uh, um, speaking about uh, uh, the designing for the long tail, actually uh, my mm -hmm. suggestion uh, is uh, to save your energy. Um, there is this principle that's called the Pareto principle. Um, that says that uh, actually in uh, conversational technologies, 80% uh, uh, of the users actually use uh, just the 20% of conversational path. And uh, these conversational paths are used for the key use cases. Just 20% of users uh, exploit uh, the remaining 80% of conversational path. Uh, and uh, most of the time, they are just uh, for like uh, less useful and like uh, uh, less important uh, uh, use cases. Then my suggestion is okay, uh, just focus on the 80% uh, of the users and then try to uh, adapt your system uh, even for uh, to satisfy the needs uh, of uh, uh, the uh, remaining 20% 20 per, 20 of them. Uh, in uh, okay, since now on, like uh, we uh, listed for you uh, some practical suggestions uh, uh, for uh, the implementation of uh, uh, a conversational agent. Uh, they are mainly about uh, um, uh, like uh, we provide you even with some examples, and the examples uh, are mainly about uh, written conversational agents, uh, uh, but some principles are apply, uh, applicable uh, even to uh, uh, spoken conversational tools. Um, I will be very, very quick uh, with this, then uh, don't worry. Uh, and like uh, keep in mind uh, uh, all these suggestions for your project idea. And uh, while I'm speaking, uh, I'm telling you about uh, uh, about the, the suggestions. Uh, try to figure out how could you apply these principles, uh, those principles, maybe in your interface, in your uh, in your product, uh, if you already have an idea for your uh, for your product. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, uh, expect user to be informative. What does it mean? Uh, it means that uh, you should expect that the user gives a lot of information uh, to, to the agent and even uh, more, informations, uh, more information uh, uh, than uh, uh, the one you expected. But what happens then? That when the user already told you something, told something to, to the agent, uh, she does not expect to um, repeat that information to the agent again. Then you should, while, while designing the, the interface, you should be able to uh, uh, collect as much information uh, as, uh, as possible from, uh, from the user at every point of, uh, uh, of the dialogue. Um, the the second point uh, is uh, get the dialogue back on track. Uh, what does it mean? Actually, in uh, um, normal user interfaces, we have errors. It can happen that, uh, for example, a user uh, goes uh, like takes one path in uh, browsing uh, a website, uh, but actually that was not the expected path. 
to reach uh, her goal or his goal. Uh, in conversational agents, uh, uh, this uh, uh, concept does not exist. Uh, exist. Error, uh, errors uh, do not exist uh, in conversational agents. Uh, it does exist just uh, error handling. Uh, what does it mean? That it does mean that uh, um, even if the user uh, takes uh, a, a path you were not expecting uh, to fulfill and to uh, accomplish the, a precise goal, you should be able uh, with uh, your agent uh, to conduct uh, her or him again on the uh, um, uh, main uh, on the main path and in, uh, on the path uh, you can uh, manage to uh, to work with. Uh, to, to do it, uh, one, uh, one key uh, step, one key value uh, will be to move the uh, conversation forward. Uh, like your users, uh, your persona should also be cooperative and informative, offering uh, as much information uh, as it is necessary to advance the, the conversation. Uh, uh, optimize uh, for, for relevance, uh, of course. Uh, uh, in, a, in a graphical user interface, uh, maybe you can put uh, so many information uh, uh, and the, is, will be the, the user to uh, decide uh, uh, which information is uh, important uh, for uh, uh, her or for him. Uh, actually, in conversational interfaces, uh, what happens uh, is that uh, uh, you should uh, um, avoid saying too much uh, um, in an uh, uncooperative way. Um, you should uh, try to figure out what is the best compromise uh, uh, between saying too much and uh, saying too little. Uh, of course, uh, uh, people naturally avoid ambiguity and uh, uh, obscurity uh, of expression in a, in a conversation. This means that uh, uh, you should use words and phrases that are familiar uh, to, to your target user uh, and that help reduce the uh, cognitive load uh, uh, of, uh, of the user. Um, when it comes uh, to uh, word choice, uh, if you uh, wouldn't say it, uh, neither should your persona, uh, the uh, agent persona. Um, here is uh, an important aspect, uh, even from uh, a technological point of view. Uh, your agent uh, uh, should uh, uh, keep track of the context of the conversation. Uh, this means that, for example, uh, when uh, uh, we are speaking about uh, uh, booking a flight uh, from uh, Milan, uh, when I ask uh, uh, about uh, uh, another uh, um, starting point, uh, it, will, it should be clear for the agent uh, to understand that I'm still speaking about uh, taking a flight. And that's the context uh, of, uh, of the conversation. Uh, you I exactly uh, as uh, um, in real life situation, uh, when we don't like people uh, talking too much uh, because they can be boring, they can be annoying. Uh, it's the same for conversational agents and conversational technologies. When we create a, a bot mm -hmm. uh, that mo monopolizes the, the conversation um, and uh, try to present all options and questions in a single turn, uh, it can be like uh, annoying uh, for, uh, for the user. And uh, that's not what uh, you should try to do. What you should try to do is instead uh, uh, to uh, focus on the user and uh, to uh, try to understand what she or he is looking for uh, and uh, to go uh, directly to the point without, uh, as I said, uh, um, long uh, uh, journey path to uh, uh, reach the, the final goal. Uh, um, a way to obtain this uh, is to use short, simple words. Uh, uh, and again, uh, in this way, uh, even from a, a looking perspective, uh, uh, it will be easier to um, 
understand uh, uh, what the the agent is saying. Uh, and uh, again, uh, uh, this is a, um, another suggestion. Um, if you want the user to do something, give them a reason first. And with this, I mean, uh, you should try to uh, follow this forma, uh, formula to get what you want, like to uh, uh, reserve a flight, do this thing. Then like uh, when you anticipate to the user uh, why, she or he is supposed to do an operation, uh, then uh, it has been proved that uh, the user will do uh, it more likely and uh, in a, a more efficient way. Um, you should try to create a sort of empathy with, uh, with the user, and uh, this means that uh, your agent, uh, your persona, uh, should uh, uh, try to look uh, friendly and uh, informal. For this, this reason, uh, is uh, um, not uh, suggestible to use uh, uh, niceties, even is uh, it, uh, even if uh, it's polite, is uh, it can be extremely polite, uh, and uh, uh, people uh, uh, would feel it uh, uh, as distant uh, and uh, and formal. Uh, another uh, way, uh, another um, tip to um, avoid uh, uh, to be felt as uh, uh, formal uh, is to, uh, to use constructions. Uh, messaging, uh, uh, that's, why, that's because messaging without contractions uh, sounds uh, uh, a little robotic uh, and uh, unnatural. Uh, think, uh, for example, uh, about uh, when you chat with uh, your friends uh, and uh, your parents, I don't know. And now, um, like uh, we have a couple of slides with just uh, uh, um, text uh, without any, any example, uh, we can even skip them uh, and they are all like uh, uh, other kind of suggestions uh, about uh, uh, um, how to uh, uh, how to create a, a powerful and an effective uh, conversational uh, uh, experience. Uh, I will prefer to um, focus more uh, uh, on uh, uh, some other aspects uh, that are about uh, uh, the language, language choices. Uh, for example, uh, when you uh, think to create uh, a, a um, conversational agent uh, uh, for uh, um, some social media uh, platform, uh, then uh, uh, with this I mean uh, a, a written chatbot. Uh, you should avoid uh, exclamation points, uh, and that's because uh, it, they can be perceived as uh, shouting, exactly as a uh, capitalization of uh, all uh, uh, all the sentence. Uh, when you write, uh, uh, when your agent writes uh, some uh, numbers, uh, uh, please use uh, numerals and uh, don't uh, uh, transcribe uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the the number in letters. And uh, uh, with respect to uh, timing, uh, um, pay attention to the context of, uh, of your agent. For example, when you are operating, uh, when your agent is operating in uh, uh, Italy, uh, it's fine uh, uh, to use like uh, a 24 uh, um, hours format. Uh, but uh, when, you, uh, your, when your agent is operating in, in uh, US, for example, it's better to use uh, uh, 12 hours format with uh, uh, AM and uh, PM. Uh, for the, the same reasons, uh, uh, you should follow, you should use uh, symbols uh, for uh, describing concept. For example, uh, you should use the dollar symbol uh, instead of writing uh, dollar in, uh, in letters and spelling it. Uh, and again, capitalization uh, is what I already said before. Uh, actually, um, in this case, uh, uh, what uh, uh, I would like to uh, underline is that uh, every sentence uh, should start with a, a capital letter. Uh, 
uh, and that's because it has been proved that uh, uh, it's uh, really easier for the for the, for users for human beings uh, to detect uh, the uh, starting point uh, of uh, every sentence uh, uh, when uh, uh, the capital letter when it it starts with a, a capital letter. Then, like uh, I, I hope I didn't uh, annoy and I, I didn't bore you too too much in, in this uh, in this part. And uh, I will leave the the floor to to Mikol, who is gonna explain us a bit more about uh, um, the perception of uh, uh, conversational agents uh, and uh, about uh, how the uh, conversational process uh, design process can fail sometimes. Thank you, Thank Fabio. You, Fabio. So uh, basically, right now we will go through some funny example uh, of how chatbot can fail. Uh, so let's start from some basic principles. So uh, basically uh, what we would like to stress here is that sometimes bot can fail uh, because first of all, artificial intelligence is not uh, so um, uh, developed yet. So it's not so accessible. Um, so then you uh, sometimes the bot are uh, are missing some sort of transparency, so you don't see actually how they could work and uh, uh, actually how they can uh, if they can actually work in a proper way. Um, sometimes they cannot get the context of what you are saying. So basically you are trying to start a conversation with the agent and then it uh, could not understand uh, what is the topic you are going to talk about. Um, then it's difficult for them to just interface and communicate with some business systems and they are not able to handle many tasks uh, at once and uh, sometimes they are not um, they have not a proper human uh, protocol so sometimes but uh, just causing uh, a lot of frustration in the user. So the user perception is affected by the fact that the, the, the bots are failing uh, a lot of the time. So I would like to share with you some of the example. So here, uh, for example, this is uh, uh, one of the most famous, famous fail uh, that has been reported, as you see in the link by The Guardian. And here, basically, uh, yeah, it's just saying that Hitler did nothing wrong. So yeah, this is one of the most uh, fail of, failure uh, of the of the chatbot. But let's see what how also the user perception is affected by the agent itself. So, for example, one of the aspects that is very important in the agent is the embodiment, as we mentioned before. So the embodiment is also um, affecting and impacting the human likeness uh, with respect to the agent. So uh, as you see here, there is a plot where uh, there is this function that is increasing as uh, the agent is more human-like as a top uh, and, and reach the top at a certain point where the human are really like uh, um, and are really familiar so they are more uh, engaged and maybe they are uh, more involved uh, in the conversation because they perceive the robot or the in this case the human uh, noid robot that is at the top level of this function um, as a really familiar agent. But then, as soon as they get closer to the human-like, so as much as they are similar to the human beings in terms of embodiment, so uh, in terms of uh, physical aspect, uh, this likeness, so this familiarity is uh, decreasing so much, uh, up to the point that uh, actually uh, the user perception of the agent 
is really negative because uh, the agent is too realistic and is too uh, similar to the human being. And so there is a sort of rejection um, against this type of embodiment. So also the embodiment is really important and people could uh, should think about that and design the conversational agent according also to the, uh, these principles. So, and this is called uncanny valley because yeah, as you can see, uh, there is a, a deep uh, valley, let's say, uh, that happens when the, um, when the agent is too similar to the human. Um, Another uh, important aspect that affects the user perspective uh, is the, their expectations. So basically you are expecting something from the chatbot and you are just frustrated because actually uh, the bot is not fulfilling your needs. So uh, in this case, the user asks, I need to place an order and the Domino Pizza bot just reply, would you like to place your easy order? reorder your most recent order or start a new order. And so the user is saying, is Domino's chatbot still on? And so the chatbot is just repeating the same sentence. Uh, and so the user gets frustrated and understand that he should uh, choose one of the options that the bot provide him. And so it's just answering with new order. So um, basically this is just uh, also another example of how much uh, the user is expecting more from the chatbot, but is not happening. So this is another uh, example of uh, Tinder that if you want to <laughs> read uh, through all of it, it's funny. Um, and then I want to share with you how uh, easy it is actually to develop a conversational agent. Um, so basically, uh, there are several tools and several platforms um, that uh, allows to uh, develop some interesting conversational agent. Uh, this platform are provided by Google, Facebook, Amazon, IBM, and so on. So as you can see in this slide here are collected all, all the possible uh, conversational platform that can provide you uh, a tool for develop a conversational agent. Um, so basically all these system, um, are, they basically elaborate a response to the user, uh, intention, uh, that have been detected by the natural language processing unit. So all these system, um, are, have some sort of natural language processing unit that allows to um, map the user intent with a correspondent uh, response. So as you can see um, here, there are a lot of intelligent assistants that you can find online <laughs> and they are all categorized according to the, their aim. So they could be, I don't know, mobile and personal assistant, advisor, virtual agent, and customer assistant, employer assistant, and so on. So um, as you can see here, you can uh, have a really big picture of uh, the intelligent uh, assistant landscape. Uh, but let's move uh, to the more practical, um, let's say, concept. So how uh, to we can develop a conversational agent. We would like to show you a really easy example. So we would like to share with you how much is simple to and easy to develop a conversational agent. So for example, Google, and we want to share with you the Dialogflow platform that is a Google own uh, one. They basically are trying, they just provide this tool that allows to build and develop conversational agent based on natural language conversation. It supports many languages, so um, today in the lecture I will show you how to create one agent, how to create an intent and so on, and you can do it by yourself at the end of the lecture if you want, and me and Fabio were av available for any question, um, and you can choose whatever language you prefer. So, but let me explain you better what 
which are the main concept of the dialogue flow so of this conversational uh, developer platform. So basically uh, what you can do is create an agent. An agent is basically uh, the, let's say, the bot that you want to create for a specific task. Uh, so for example, uh, I don't know, we see before the poncho bot that was the one that you ask uh, for the, uh, the weather. So basically the agent was the poncho agent. And so uh, each agent is corresponding to one application and is basically the person that you want to uh, and, or the embodied agent that you want to assign to the real conversation agent. Then there are some entities. Um, basically, this the entities concept uh, refer to uh, the fact that they belong to a specific domain. So, uh, for example, um, I don't know, an entity could be, as you see in the in the in the example here, could be could be the currency. So basically, if the currency is in heroes, you know that. Uh, so the um, entities uh, would be the unit currency that is the he hero. So um, you can associate. Uh, the unit of the currency uh, with the proper value uh, through this entity concept. Uh, so basically they are uh, some concepts that are um, just mapping to the specific domain you want to talk about. Um, then the more one of the more important uh, concept is the intent. So b basically the intent uh, are um, a set of uh, intention that you expect from the user. So basically when the developer, uh, I don't know, think about the conversation flow and think about how many requests could receive from the user, it is uh, trying to design the intent. So a sort of mapping between what he is expecting the user would say and the specific action that you want to uh, do in response. Uh, so we will see what actually uh, the intent means in the example. Then um, the RAR action. So basically uh, you can provide your conversational agent with some action capabilities. So uh, you, for example, uh, I don't know, you can uh, uh, allow the, an action uh, through a specific intent that uh, could be triggered by the user voice. Um, so, and, and basically this action that could be some steps uh, that, that the conversational agent can act uh, are handled by external program. And then at the end there is the context. So um, basically the context is, uh, which is the topic that we are talking about. So um, for example, this is very important because in this way you can understand which is the topic of the conversation in that moment and so you can um, just understand which are the user intent according based on that. Uh, so yeah, I, I tried to explain you in details all the different aspects and concepts of the dialogue flow but I think that when an example will be easier to understand it. Um, this is the typical um, architecture of dialogue flow. So basically what happened is that the user is saying something, is trigger an intent, and then uh, once the, the intent has been triggered, the dialogue flow system associates a, a corresponding action that could be just an answer or a real action such as, uh, I don't know, turn off the lights or something like that. So um, basically this is uh, the main dialogue floor architecture. Now I would like to uh, show you how actually to create a conversational agent. So 
So I suggest you all to go through the Dialogflow uh, website. Uh, you were supposed to have already create your own account, or if you have already a Gmail or something like that, you can use directly that. Um, and I will show you which are the different steps uh, to create an agent. So uh, let me just, okay. So first of all, you just log in in your system and you uh, basically will be display something like that. So um, what you would like to do right now is create an agent. So you click on the icon create an agent and then other uh, option would be displayed. So first of all, we should decide a name for the agent. Let's call it, I don't know, um, i3 lab. So the idea is that we would like to create a bot that is able to um, answer you and reply you uh, with the information about, I don't know, me and Fabio that are working in the uh, i3 lab. So, and then we would like to choose a uh, language. So you feel free to choose whatever language are available from the list. Uh, I would choose the English one so everyone can understand it. And then let's set the time. So now you see it's really simple. You just click create and then, okay, no, something goes wrong. So <laughs> uh, basically, let me check. Why is not? Um, fail ZCP. Uh, so I think that maybe uh, I don't have any more project of yet. Uh, let me check again, changing. Sorry about that. I don't know why <laughs> it's not creating me the agent. Maybe I reached the limit uh, of the agent. So, well, I will show you. Uh, I think that if is your first agent creation, we will you will not have any uh, kind of this error because uh, you will not have any. Uh, I think you will not have already uh, achieved your limits. So. Let me just use one of the agents that I have already uh, created. So for example, the agent one. Uh, so, um, let's, so let's imagine that you have created your own, boat, your own agent that is called agent one. Then uh, you can go to the intent page, for example, and you can find uh, some uh, um, already uh, some intent default. So these two intent are the one that um, are already implemented in the in the dialog flow. So uh, there is a default welcome intent that is basically whenever you try to interact with the robot, it starts to uh, the conversation with you. So let's click on it and let me. OK, so basically uh, here are Sorry, this is Italian because uh, maybe this bot was, uh, yeah, in Italian. Um, so basically here are all the training phase. Uh, so whatever phrase you are expecting the user would say to you. So for interacting with, our, uh, with the bot, so for example, ciao, ciao, ciao bello, ciao bello, and so on. But in English it would be, eh, hi, hey, hello, uh, nice to meet you or something like that. Um, and so this is what you are expecting the user would uh, say you. And then uh, here you can um, uh, add, for example, some, um, I don't know, some response to that. So for example, um, hi, uh, this is the i3 lab, uh, nice to meet you. Okay, so um, let's save his intent. And right now what we are expecting is that whenever we interact uh, with the agent, 
uh, you see that there is agent training completed, it means that now you can test your own bot. So uh, yeah, let me just, um, sorry, I put the response in English, but is in Italian. So, uh, ciao, questo è so this is ha huh, nice to meet you this is the itra lab um, and let's save it again so the internet has, has been saved and then you can just uh wait until the agent has been successfully trained and then you can try it so for example if we try to trigger the welcome intent we should uh, write down, for example, one of the words that we use as a training phrase, also something different. Um, and let's do ciao. And you see that in the uh, training, you see your response. So, uh, ciao, questo è di Trelab, piacere di conoscerti. So, the idea is that you can test uh, very easily your bot. So, here was, uh, yeah, just brief uh, and very easy example of uh, how could you build your own agent. And then, of course, you can create how many intents you prefer. So you can just create your own intent that is called, uh, I don't know, um, I don't know, the, the, let's call the intent, uh, oh, uh, lab information and maybe we could decide to uh, train our uh, intent with uh, other training phase so you can add for example your training phase which is I don't know um, uh, this is always in Italian so sorry um, uh, Vorrei informazioni sul laboratorio. And then, uh, for example, you can decide to add more response and you say, um, uh, Litre Lab uh, progetta tecnologie per persone con disabilità. Cognitiva. So the idea is that we provide uh, a response that could be, for example, the ITRA lab is designing technology for people with, disability, with cognitive disability. So let's just uh, save again and we can test this intent as well. So, for example, the internet has been saved, the agent training is complete. So, after we can say always ciao, then hi, this is the ITRA lab. So, I want you, uh, I want some information about the lab. So, um, and he will provide us the response that we decide. So, the ITRA lab is designing technology for people with cognitive disability. So this is just an example to yeah, uh, give you some more concrete idea of how to develop the uh, some career sectional agent. So um, here in the slide, you can find all the steps. So for example, to do what I have uh, just have already done. Um, and then you can try by yourself. So if you want, you can log in in Dialogflow and try to create a, job, a chatbot for introducing yourself or your project team to user who interact with it. So basically we would like you to create a chatbot that allows people interacting with it to know more about yourself or if you have already created a project team uh, about your project team and maybe the topic that you are thinking uh, to investigate, I don't know, whatever. So um, feel free to uh, try to create a chatbot by your own. So I would like to thank you all of you for your attention. I hope this uh, lecture, uh, even if you virtual was interesting and uh, interactive and not uh, too much boring, I hope so. <laughs>
And thank you all. Uh, I don't know if Fabio wants to add some more comments. We have lost Fabio. <laughs> well, they, I think that uh, maybe he, um, I don't know where he is, but okay, I would like to thank you all. If you have any question, please feel free to ask. Uh, you can find the, our emails in here in the slides. So it's just name.surname at polyme.e. Um, and okay, Fabio just texted me that uh, something is just uh, locked. Okay, so I don't know why he cannot more access the uh, conversation. So I uh, would like to just um, thank you again for your attention. And Fabio is also, uh, thank you all. Um, and just feel free to email us if you have any question. Thank you, have a nice day, bye.